So, you know, I, I don't really have to do a lot of algebra. It's more of a content related thing. So that's uh, uh, really why um, I wanted to do it because it, there's a kind of conceptual thing there and you have to look up a formula. And, you know, this is actually one formula that I uh, forget every semester. So if I just uh, walk me up in the middle of the night, don't give me access to textbook and force me to answer it, I'm not entirely sure I could. <laughs> um, uh, maybe with some work I could, but let me do it the easier way. So this question says, an ideal gas of some number of molecules at some temperature is stored to the left half of an insulating container using a partition legal value. And what is the uh, entropy change in each of the following cases? Use K for Boltzmann's constant. Okay. Uh, let's look at each one. And if uh, I figure that there's a formula that could be useful, but I don't remember, I'll use the hint to see if uh, there's a link to the formulas. So it says um, the partition is suddenly removed and the gas quickly fills the entire container. Here, uh, if you're thinking zero, uh, that's wrong. Um, it's actually, um, uh, <laughs> even though uh, when the partition is suddenly removed, there's no heat transfer, the, the process of removing the partition suddenly, it's, um, it's an irreversible process. The expression that you might remember seeing uh, in some area in the textbook, the one that talks about the you know change of entropy being heat transfer divided by the temperature at which heat transfer occurs. The thing that you have to remember is that this is meant for reversible processes. So whenever you have an irreversible process, like a free expansion of a gas, you have to just start by acknowledging, oh, I can't use this. I need something else. And that something else is a formula that I don't remember. Let's see if there's a hint that will help me. Uh, use a convenient. Yeah, you can do that. Is there an overall hint that's less? Uh, okay. So there's an overall hint. I have a feeling that I can just use this to um, look up a formula in the textbook. Um, I think a 4.6 entropy will probably have what I'm looking for. So let me look at it. Okay, that, that's the when the processes are reversible, quasi-static. Um, and uh, I think they do a derivation of change of entropy for all processes. Um, yeah, or do they not? Uh, let me look at the next one. I mean, if I have to do the hard work, then I'll do it. Uh, I was hoping to avoid it. Okay, okay. I think they will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Example for. Yeah, I should have read the thing more. Yeah, here they do it. They actually do drive it. Yeah. So this. Um, so here, what they've done is um, they've. They made the use of the fact that uh, entropy is a, a state function. So. You don't have to have the exact path that um, exact path that the process takes. As long as your endpoints are the same, um, your entropy change will be the same. So when the partition is suddenly removed and the gas quickly fills the entire container, really what's the important thing here is that change of temperature is zero because in this free expansion of a gas, there's no work being done, so there's no. Um, the, the, there shouldn't be any reason for the internal energy to change. So what they've done in this solution of the example is they acknowledge the fact and just uh, um, since the temperature is constant, they just came up with an irrever the reversible path of an isothermal process. And using that reversible path, they calculate the change of entropy that, and I'm just going to copy that over with the constants that we do use. So that nr, that should be number of molecules times Boltzmann constant times now natural log of uh, the, so the final volume, double the volume, divide by initial volume, so it should be two. Let's double check and make sure that that's correct. Good. Um, so, um, so yeah, and if you want to do more work, you can basically do what this example did, but I'm just copying it. It says, a tiny hole is punctured in the partition, and after a long period, the gas reaches an equilibrium state such that there's no net flow through the hole. 
if you think about this for enough of a time, you know, what's the difference between um, what's the difference between removing this suddenly and letting the gas slowly flow through? I hope you reach the conclusion that there isn't actually a difference. There's a difference of how long it takes, but uh, the gas expanding through the hole, it's still irreversible. So, um, so you can't say it's zero, because it's um, you can't use the Q over T for that. Um, but I guess uh, the kind of the end beginning and the end point is still the same. Um, you know, beginning point is same by the setup, and the end point is that it's still the same temperature, double the volume. So what the derivation that they did here, nothing there has to change. So you can just copy and paste that. That will be your answer for B. Let's double check. Yeah. And uh, finally, it says the partition is moved very slowly <laughs> and adiabatically all the way to the right wall so that the gas finally fills the entire corner. Ah, then it should be zero. So what that means is if this, so this third process, let me just diagram it so that there's a kind of um, understanding of how those three processes are different. Uh, well, at least one of them is different from the other two. So when you illustrate what's happening on a PV diagram, um, you have at half the volume at some temperature, let's say this is my initial state. Um, your initial P0, initial V0. And there's some final state that's reached in the first two cases. And that final state that's reached in the first two, two cases is going to be where it's at half the pressure and double the volume. So that when you look at the temperature here, temperature here, they are the same. And for the processes one and two, if you draw any kind of path here, um, that's wrong. Because uh, whenever you draw a path on a PV diagram, that implies that there's a uh, kind of infinitesimal reversible change you can make, and that's not the case. So when you are describing processes in one or two, you just uh, have to say you started out in this process in this uh, state. And magically, <laughs> the gas reaches this state, or not magically, through an undefined state. Because as the gas leaks out, um, you don't have a well-defined pressure or well-defined volume. So somehow, without knowing the intermediate state, it somehow reaches here. Um, so that's one. And the the the, um, the kind of the version of the re reversible process that the example uses to calculate the the change in the entropy is the isothermal process, where here throughout the whole thing, T is constant. Um, it's not the same process as what's there in 1 and 2. You know, there's work being done, there's heat transfer, but for the purpose of entropy calculation, doesn't matter. In 3, it's describing partition is being moved very slowly and adiabatically. And because it's an adiabatic expansion, as it expands, the temperature of the gas is going to change. So when you reach the final volume, final volume will be the same. That's what's kind of enforced by the structure of the thing. But your final pressure will be less than the final pressure in the other case. And the temperature here, um, temperature here will be less than your initial temperature. And um, if, uh, so you, you might ask, so if, if the, um, if there's no heat transfer, how did the gas lose its uh, internal energy and where did it lose it to? How is the work done? The gas, as it's expanding, it's uh, doing work against this partition or piston, giving it kinetic energy. So the gas loses, gas is doing work on this partition, so it's uh, losing energy through that work being done. And actually, the you know overall energy is still conserved. So the gas doing that work must be giving this partition uh, kinetic energy or energy. So um, I guess if there's something that's controlling that partition, um, kind of letting it expand out slowly, 
whatever that agent is controlling could be absorbing that work through that interaction. Now, if you somehow have it set it up so that this is on some frictionless amount, it can expand us frictionlessly, uh, like without any outside interaction. Then as it expands out, this will gain kinetic energy. And when it collides with the end point here, that kinetic energy will come back into uh, heat energy or thermal energy so that your final um, state will be same as one and two um, or same as if there had been an isothermal expansion. Um, so you kind of to imagine that this particular state is the moment before the partition collides with the end and turns the mechanical energy back into the uh, back into the, the thermal energy. So after the collision, there should be some kind of process here that uh, turns it into, into this final final state. Um, so so yeah, this is the question. Um, I guess if you're just looking up the answers from the textbook, maybe it's not that hard. But uh, I thought uh, understanding fully what's going on here um, deserved some explanation and um, uh, thinking through.